Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you are. My name is Alex, and I'm here to teach you about tile maps in GDevelop 5. Thanks for joining me on the canvas. So here I have an absolute blank screen for GDevelop. There's nothing, no, nothing in the project yet. No um, extensions or anything like that. We, in fact, we don't need any extensions. So to begin this process, what I like to do first is make sure that my grid is set up the way I want. Now, GDevelop's tile map system does not have auto tiling yet. So if it has changed, I'll make another video when that changes. But until then, just disclaimer, they don't have auto tiling yet, but they have something pretty close. So what we have to do is uh, click on add a new object. We're going to add the tile map object. And my tile map that I'm using actually is an eight by eight. You might need to change this to whatever you want, but mine's an eight by eight canvas. And all of my tile set is built into a single image, just like this, that is on a eight by eight grid as well. But each of these textures are eight by eight. So all I've done is export that. And I'm going to click on it here. And we'll see that we have this great tile set available to us now here. Before I continue, it's really important that there's a little setting here that, it, that is critical to understanding what's going on. And that's click on the tile map grid to activate or deactivate a hitbox. Now, this isn't as robust as I like to see it, but it is a great uh, tool at, uh, to, to use inside of GDevelop right now, uh, as, as it does sort of speed line this process just a little bit. But we are still going to have to make another object that is a collision object to be able to get slopes into our, our game. So if your game doesn't have slopes, you're in luck. You don't need to do this, but otherwise you would. We're going to click on each of these to activate them. And for this demonstration, I'm only going to use this grid down here and these two sloping objects. But I'm not going to click on them because that would add a collision box to them. And that might mess up, well, everything I'm trying to do here. So uh, I'll, I'll, and I'll show you why. I'm not adding them in. We're going to hit apply. When we add the tile map object to instance to our uh, uh, our game, we can see here on the canvas that it has this tiny little square. And it's based on the 8 by 8 grid that I had already defined it as earlier. So what one thing I will do, oops, wrong button, is we're going to open the panel properties. And now we can check out. We have an 8 by 8 square. And here's our tiles. If I click on the tile paint feature, and we have paint, flip horizontal, and flip vertically, as well as an erase feature. But it's based on its own grid. So as I click here, you'll see it's based on uh, the, you could kind of, I don't know if you saw that or not. Maybe the, it, it may or may not have picked that up, but here's that little blue line that shows you where the tile map grid is. If I left click and continue to hold that down while I drag, I can do a, uh, I guess like a like an uh, a stretching the repeating the texture. There we go. That's what I was trying to think. We're just going to keep repeating the texture until I let it go. Now this has become a grid. So this point up here is zero 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 one zero two zero three. For my convenience sake, because we'll need to be adding another object type to this project, which I'm just going to delete this land real quick. Uh, I'm actually going to change the canvas size down to eight by eight because we do still need to use the GDevelop canvas for something else. So in this example, I want to make a platforming style of game. So what I need to do is go to my tile map, go to behaviors, and add the appropriate behavior. This is a platform. The ledges can't be grabbed, so hit apply. And now when we add the tile map instance to our game, we have a... Um, this will count as a collision point, especially because we enable the collisions. So I'm just going to stretch this all the way across the bottom, do it multiple times until it's all done. And now I have a, a gra or a dirt texture that goes all the way through. I'm going to grab the top just to make one for the grass, just a little bit here. We don't need to go too far. Let, let go. Now that uh, I have the the tile map set up the way I want, maybe I wanted to add slopes in my game. Well, because of the way that tile mapping works in Gmail GDevelop, currently every hitbox or collision square is unfortunately 
always a square. So for us to add our own collision points to a object like this, we would need to create a new object. We're going to call it collision. And we're going to import or we're going to create it with Piskel. I'm going to change this to 8x8 because that's our current ga our game's canvas size. We're going to hit resize. I'm going to turn this red cube or turn this into a red cube, forgive me. And then I'm going to use the line stroke tool. We're going to select black and we're going to select it and draw it all the way across. You're going to use the shape selector tool or Z, click on it, and we're going to delete all of that extra red that we don't need because we're making a slope. So we're going to hit save. And the next thing that we need to do is go to the collision mask, use a custom collision mask, and we ultimately can delete this vertice by clicking on it and then click delete, and it'll stretch all the way across. And uh, if I hadn't have done that, another way to do it simply would have been to take that, that point, drag it over here until it snaps into place. You'll see it snap in, let go, and it'll automatically turn itself into a triangle. We're gonna hit close, hit apply, and now we have a collision shape. But what's really cool about the newest version of GDevelop is whenever I bring an object like this into um, my instance or like into GDevelop, right? I can now click the flip horizontally button inside of its properties panel and they'll flip it automatically for me. So by holding control and drag clicking every time I uh, want to duplicate one of these items, we now have sloping collision boxes. However, there's one thing we haven't done yet. We need to add the same behavior that we did for the other tile set, and that's the platform behavior, turn off ledge grabbing. And since I already have selected all of my collision shapes, I'm going to add a new layer, and we're going to call this collision. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to move the collisions to their own layer, and that way we can hide them when we preview our game and we won't see the collisions as they currently are. So if I was to preview this, nothing would really happen because there isn't much to report on as our game, <clears throat> uh, there isn't much to report on as there isn't any action or input happening in our game. So to, to show you that the slopes work, we're gonna create a player sprite, let's call it player. We're gonna add the behavior to it for platforming character we're going to leave default controls on, but we're going to turn off grab ledges. And we're going to add this player object to our game. It's a little underrepresented here. So let's add a, an item from the asset store. We're going to add a player icon to the asset store. So we'll just do a player walk. I'm not going to import the entire animation. We're just going to grab the, the icon for it. So now we have our player. Now, in platforming, you want to generally oops, move your, your point of your sprite down to about the legs and in between both of them if you can for the origin. And that's where it'll GDevelop will put your character uh, when, when the game starts running. So if wherever that point is, usually it's at the top left. But for this, because we're running on the ground, I want it to be at my player's feet. So as I move over here, you'll see as I touch that slope, I'm actually sloped up, right? And now... If I didn't have this collision, so we're going to select this and uh, actually we're, we're going to just delete that layer and we're going to remove the objects from the game. So now we don't have any collisions and instead I'm going to show you what happens when we add the collision to the shape like this, hit preview. Unfortunately, it is still a cube and so we'll end up hitting that cube and we can't go any farther. It's kind of like stairs if you see. So the best way for us to manage that is to um, undo what I've done. Unfortunately, when you delete a layer in GDevelop, you have to create it again. So I'll create the collision layer. And then this time when I, well, I guess they came back. That was very interesting. So now that the collision layer came back, it reinstated the items that were there. I didn't know to do that. I just learned something. I don't know if that was a bug, but GDevelop, keep that in, please. Uh, <laughs> and so, um. I have to go back into the tile map and disable these for the slopes to work. Again, we'll go back to hide it. And there we go. So the slopes are working, but as you see, we have this huge gap between our player and the ground he's on. So just to make it a little bit easier to see, 
All right. So once we get into our events, I want to add an action. I'm going to go to, uh, we're going to type camera. We're going to center the camera on the player object. We'll leave it as camera zero. And we're also going to one time, well, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but um, we're going to zoom the camera and we'll do it to a, uh, a four times zoom. So this will be important. If we do have multiple layers, we'll need to zoom both of those layers in to make sure that the collision overlaps are proper. So for collisions, we'll need to be there as well as centering the camera. And just to make sure that this is a little bit more organized and clean, we're going to go ahead and trigger this once while true. And we're going to move both of the zooms into one time, but we're always going to center on the player. So now we can see our tile set a little bit better and we can walk up and down right so however there is still that gap that oh excuse me however there's still that gap and we want to fix that to fix that you have to go to your player and go to your collision mask and add and, and edit your your animations uh hitbox and so again we're going to turn it off for all animations maybe we have more we just want it for this particular spot. So we're going to move it down to our player's feet. And this now becomes our player's foot hitbox. Now we can make more than one hitbox and use them for different things. We can add another collision mask, as you can see. So we can have a main collision mask and then we can have a different one. But for this, this is gonna be our movement base hitbox. So we're gonna hit save. Oops, I guess that doesn't really matter. We hit close and then hit apply. And now when our player moves over to our slope, you'll see that we're basically standing on the tile. Thanks for watching the video. That's all I have for you. Hopefully you found that introduction to tile mapping and GDevelop useful. Until next time, remember happy game making and I'll see you in the next video.